have a good time Put a smile on your face, yeah Can't be caring Relation Radio mm-hmm. Even brighten your day And help you through the night Bring you good music Can't be caring Relation Radio And here's your host Father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag. Praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. Okay. My Christ swag. Yeah. This my Christ swag. Yeah. My Christ swag. Yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. My Christ swag. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the street. South of the arch, man Where I used to drink, roll up and used to spark, man Now I got my head straight Shining like a million bucks Christ elevated me Going past the ceiling, bruh St. Louis did it God Squad t-shirt Homie, how you doing? Please to meet you, this my rebirth Addicted to the word It's pumping through my artery Faith on the meal The swag is a part of me Now my glow bright Souls been redeemed Covered in the blood No shower, cause I'm clean Done playing games Rid of the Xbox, almost flatline, but Christ made my chest pop, walked on the edge, the devil made me wobble, Jesus took the wheel, fast forward, full throttle, still in the hood, got that street slain, mixed with the spirit, it's a G thing. Deep high talk, talk, just the way I walk, walk. Been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect, God just forgave me. Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay. yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. God this squad, my bruh. Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, Cardi, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Look. Uh, my whole style come from Christ yeah. So own it, no sir, you can't put a price Like white on rice, I got his blood on me To be honest, I just care about my guy, homie And if I'm only living for him It don't really even matter what y'all think of me Opinions, you can let them be I'm killing it, I let them see The old me is gone Keep the demons out my heart Then Christ found a home No more Patron or Nitrous I might just give God a praise with my best He's highest, glory in here, hallelujah, yes sir, put my trust in the Lord, I ain't having no fear, no I don't have a care, besides pleasing my father, tell any hater you see man, don't even bother, cause Jesus is my medicine, I ain't never hurting, catching waves of his glory, man I'm Christ swag serving, yeah. talk, 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 just the way I walk, walk, been set free, cause my father paid the cost, cost. no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy, this my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Yeah, uh-huh. this my Christ swag. Okay, uh, my Christ swag. Yeah, this my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Yeah, uh-huh. uh-huh. this my Christ swag. God squad. My Christ swag. Yeah. Lie, uh, okay, I yeah, get it from my father uh-huh. Head to toe, swinging on that word, that's the motto yeah. Used to be a up or down, flipper like the lie though uh-huh. Roll with big drink and ST, old squad uh-huh. though uh-huh. Now I'm uh-huh. aiming at the world with that blessed go yeah. Hard repetition, stay flexing, holy rollers know uh-huh. When you see that light shine, this ain't baby doe He ain't got a VVS on him, what a freak show uh-huh. nah. No, but I'm close with my father though nah. I ain't Leroy, but the boy got a lot the glow took a whole lot of laying out to kill his ego uh-huh. missing my whole purpose like Shaq with some free throws uh-huh. if you rap in vain can't edify the people uh-huh. swag on 100 gaining speed out of your flow and I'm top flow uh-huh. reaching for his glory you think I got some swag Christ the one that poured it on me I talk talk just the way I walk walk been set free cause my father paid the cost cost no I'm not perfect God just forgave me got a new swag praising Christ like I'm crazy this my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way, okay. My Christ way, yeah. This my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way. My Christ way, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Today's April the 30th, 
2021. It's that time again. Welcome back. Welcome back to uh, Nation Radio. Uh, this is Cedric on Relentless Pursuit. Y'all know we're still pursuing this thing. Still got a million goals out in front of us. I'm tackling mine one day at a time, one week at a time. You know, that's 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 how we live in this life. And, uh, wow, this has been a, a wonderful week. I tell you, it's been a, a week uh, where problem-solving steps have, man, I've had to call them, uh, uh, I've had to visit and revisit those problem-solving steps. It has helped me really get through a, a tough week. So uh, as I was getting through the week, I, I talked to several friends, and I started thinking, man, friendships, friendships are wonderful. And, uh, I, I, man, I know I have friends, uh, and me, I'm kind of special. I have vacations, and mostly that's just a friend, right? And when I call you my friend, I generally mean that you are a close friend. So um, I, I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about, about solving these problems that I had, and I had to call on a friend to help me out, right? And so when I called on that friend to help me out, it just made me think about something. So I I, I know, again, everything is cliche but but uh, I started to think about a couple of Bible verses, and, and, and one stuck with me, and it was just Luke 6, 31. It says, uh, uh, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. You know what? That just stuck with me. So uh, I hope today that we can, we can have a, a, a pretty enlightening conversation about um, – Basically, you know, friendships, you know, I uh, want to talk a little bit about how to choose them, but, you know, we're going to let the conversation go the way it may, but definitely I know there are reasons why we need friends, and then I know that there's some things that we should look for in friends. So I wanted to talk about that today with my partner in crime, uh, 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 Mr. Terry Jones, are you on with me tonight? Yes, sir. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. Uh, Hey. <laughs> See, even that throws some applause your way. <laughs> I'm yeah. doing real good, yeah. man. I t- <laughs> yeah, it's it's just it's just a great day. Um, you know, I sit back, I was thinking, man, and I I, I guess I was just thinking, you know, part of me uh, with with everything that's going on in the world. Um, you know, we we've, we've talked about what's going on in politics. We've talked about. Uh, uh, racial justice. Um, uh, we, we, we. I mean, we've covered the gambit, and, and we've even talked about uh, relationships. And so I just started to think. I had a, you know, I personally, I don't know how the rest of the world is. I have a, some people that I truly call friends, and I can talk to them about anything, and they can talk to me about anything, and but it's only a few people I can do that with. And and so, but I call them friends. So I want to just wrap a little bit about today about you know the the, the reason I felt so 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 uh, I guess the word is uh, touched today by the word friendship and the meaning of friendship and the thought of having friends is because you know there are reasons why we need friends. And then I started thinking, okay, there's a reason why I need friends, but then. Selecting the right people to be my friend. I know how it go. Um, mm-hmm. um, it, you know how it goes. You know, we want to choose the mm-hmm. the right friends. You know how how we grow up. Right. We we get mixed up in the wrong crowds. That's an example of choosing the wrong friend. So mm-hmm. uh, I kind of want to talk a little bit about that tonight. What do you what do you, what do you think? Sounds great to me. Yeah, it better sound great, man. We'd be out here fighting. We're going to be friends no more. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's not how you treat your friends, is it? Uh, <laughs> Jake, though, how you doing, that's man? Jason. That's Jason. I'm just saying. Well, that's how you treat your friends. That's why you only got two of us. I'm just joking. <laughs> What's up, Jens? How we doing? <laughs> No, doing doing real good. So I mean, Jason just the guy that started. Okay, so so like um, so I was saying, you know, you know, I was going through some trial times, but I thought, 
Okay, friends, so why is it having – now, we're all brothers. We're all men, right? And 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 the thing is, why is it so important that – why do we need friends? Because I, I can think of some, some reasons, but some of the reasons we need friends, you know, uh, uh, coming from me, I, I think that, that – well, first off, first off, let, let's do this. What is a friend? Uh, 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 Jado, what's a friend to you? Define what friendship is. So I would say for me, friendship is someone who is going to stand beside me and support me in accomplishing my goals. Now, notice mm. I didn't say he, that person's going to make me happy or I'm always going to like or agree with this person. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, a true friend to me <laughs> is someone is going to look out for my best interest and, you know, tell me when sometimes I'm thinking that I'm going the wrong direction. You know, um, I have a lot of I have I've had people in my life throughout history who, when I was doing the wrong thing, was right there beside me, right there beside me, telling me, oh, that's OK. Or you're justified for doing that. Or you're mad at her and you want and you want to go act that way. Yeah, you're fine for that. I'm going to tell you honestly and truthfully, I wouldn't call them my friends, right? You know, mm. I would call mm-hmm. a friend is someone who's going to be like, Jason, yo, man, I know you mad at her. I know you, I know she did the, I know she did you dirty, but, you know, you're a man of God. You know, you've got a, you're a man of integrity. And is that really something you want to do, right? And then challenge me to be like, no, nah, I don't want to be that guy, right? That's what mm. I think a true friend is. It, like I said, it's like, like I said before, it's someone that's going to help me accomplish my goals and also hold me to the to the best version of me that I could be. Right. Mm. Okay, okay. So 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 like Terry, can you help us out? What is a friendship not? In your words, in your your the way you think about it. You know, you're not my friend because you're this way. What what makes a person not be able to get into your inner circle? To get in my inner circle, um, yes. if one is is makes is trustworthy, trustworthy, trustworthiness. If, if I can't trust you, um, then we can only go so far. Um, mm. um, I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing for me is is that trust. I've got to be able to if I can trust you with my secrets, you know what I'm saying, and and yeah. not. And not have them fly back up in my face when it's convenient, um, mm. for, when it's convenient for you, you know, or anybody else. But um, but just be able to to be that person, you know, um, that I, that I can just that I can just come to, or they can come to me, you know, and know that whatever they say to me is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to be. It's not going to fly back up in their face or or whatever. So I think that, that's mm. the biggest thing for me. It's trustworthy. It's being right. trustworthy in, in friendship. Trust. Okay, cause, cause see, like, like, so if you're not trustworthy, they're not in your circle. This is what this is what a friend has to be to me. And see, and I was just thinking, what could make us? If, if you really think about yourself, you know, what could make us better friends, and how can we choose them? And, and for me, when I was thinking about it, I, I was thinking about. For me, what would make me a better friend is to realize why I need friends anyway. You know what I mean? You ever think about why mm-hmm. do I need? Why do I, I? I sometimes think why do I need Terry as a friend? Why do I need Jason as a friend? Like, like here, here, here's some of my complaints. Jason, I may call you and you don't call me back in three or four days. Oh, bum! I needed to talk to you. <laughs> then I say, Terry, you know, Terry, man, I needed you. I needed your honest. A opinion on something, and you gave me this foo foo happy go lucky answer. I don't, why do I need y'all as friends? And I started really thinking, you know. And, and I tell you what, having good friends again, yeah, this is why I, this is just for me. Why I need you guys as friends is it, because I can relate to you guys, right? And 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 you guys have a certain amount of influence over me, over some of my decisions. Did y'all realize that? You ever no. you ever thought, man, Cedric is whatever, but have you ever realized that you being my friend and being the type of friend you are and being the person who's grounded the way you are, it actually influences some of my own decisions. 
can, can I say hey, something on that? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, go can ahead. I, can I say go something ahead. on that, Cedric? I didn't realize yeah. it at first. I didn't realize it at first until, you know, we had, until there was some situations that happened where, you know, where I was like, you know something, bro, that this, I, I hear you. I hear what you want to do, but that's not what needs to occur right now. And then when you came back and said, look, I heard you. I didn't do anything, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? That was like, wow, okay, that was that's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, I mean, that that right there, I think that, okay, I got it. Okay, I was like, okay, that's cool. That's real cool. You know, that he hurt, that he hurt my heart <laughs> on that, you know? Yeah, and I think that moment you're speaking about was during the time of a great personal tragedy, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I remember having to go home, and I was I, – I didn't even tell you what I was going home for at first. And then so finally the day I was leaving, I believe that uh, – I don't remember the 100%, but you can correct me where I'm wrong, but I believe that, mm-hmm. like, the day I left, I told you. And I was still struggling mm-hmm. with it when I got home because – Right. Oh man. Uh, yeah, and I was struggling. And, and you know what? That was one of those moments when I needed, I needed that that influence of a friend, um, mm-hmm. because everything in my life. And, and, and again, I'm 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 a little personal, but but everything in my life that I had been taught, that I had been trained to do, was going to get me in, and it was not going to help the situation. And so, yeah. thank God, I had a friend who spoke to me. And the way, I, you know, he, he, he brought whatever the news to me the way I needed to hear it, you know, whether it was a very subtle way or was it a very direct way. Friends kind of know how to communicate with you in those desperate situations. And, and, and I tell you, um, and, I, and I, I, can, I say this uh, with all honesty, that having, and I'm, just, I'm not trying to toot you guys as horns, I'm really not. But having you two guys as a friend has helped me make some really tough decisions, right? The decision was really, really tough for me. But because I had people like you around me, the decision wasn't so hard. The hardest part mm-hmm. of the of that decision was making the decision. Actually walking out, whatever it was, was the easier part. Like in your instance, mm-hmm. Terry, you know, having to swallow my pride and be the – the adult in the room, me thinking about yeah. doing it was more difficult than me actually doing it because I was able to talk to you and you mm-hmm. were able to talk to me. And so right. I, I think that with that being said, uh, one of the things we have to look for or another reason why we need good friends is, is, is really simple for me. It's because you help us develop those skills to cope with life. Man, have y'all I'm ever saying, heard? It, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, before before you go on there, I, I want to comment on what you just said. I think it's important uh, mm-hmm. when you talk about to hear the voice of your friends and they have influence over you. To me, that's a mark of friendship. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of people in my life mm-hmm. that tells me to do things, and for the most part, most mm-hmm. that's why people get frustrated with me because they know I probably ain't going to do it. <laughs> now, I will tell you <laughs> there are a lot of women out there that are frustrated with you, Cedric, because I tell them, I talk to my boy, and this is what we decided. Oh, you're going to do that for mm-hmm. him, but you ain't going to do that for me? I'm like, well, he's got mm-hmm. that level of influence mm-hmm. in my life. You ain't got that yet. <laughs> right. And, I, right. And, I'll, and I'll tell you, that to me, I'll tell you, that's a true sign of friendship, right? And not just from mm-hmm. being a friend, but from evaluating, right? If I got somebody in my mm-hmm. life, and they're speaking into my life, and everything they speak into my life, I either dismiss or move on from or laugh it off and, mm-hmm. and, and go some other place and don't give it a second thought, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to really call that person my friend because you don't mm. have that level of influence to speak into my life to bring me to the point where, okay, I trust right. – because that influence comes from what Terry said, trust. I trust that trust. the information and the direction you're going to give me, first and foremost, is going to be good for me because you know what I'm trying to be and what I'm trying to do. Secondly, yeah. it's coming from a place of love and, and because you care about me. So mm-hmm. when you speak into my life, I will. And I'll tell you, there's been many times I've gotten off the phone with you, and I'm just mad at you for what you said to me. I don't <laughs> like what you said, but I'll tell you this. Right. When I take a step back, mm-hmm. it's the right thing for me. And I'll come back and say, bro, I right. didn't like what you said, but it was the right thing. And, right. and to your point, mm-hmm. you know, to Terry's point, I'll come back and say, yeah, I did it that way, and I thank you for it. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I always, you know, I, yep. I think when we talk about friendships, it's as an individual, you got to look 
are my words influencing this person, and are those words influencing mm-hmm. me? And if you can't answer yes to both right. of those questions, you might question, right. like, is this really a friend? <laughs> right? Right. Mm, right. Yeah. yeah. That is true. And that see, is true, Jason. Like, 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 friendships have that, what I like to call ebb and flow. You know, that's that give and take. You know, we have our high mm-hmm. moments, we have our low moments. But, but no matter what, I, I like to say this. And, and and anybody who's a close friend to me, and I can tell you right now, there's only four people, uh, and I can name them. You know, I can name them with, without actually. Like, I can just wrap them on real fast. I can say, uh, Jason, Terry, Chris, DeAndre would be the fourth, and mm-hmm. that's it, right? You know, my other buddy, uh, he passed away a few years back, and, and but we were mm-hmm. real friends and what I mean by real friends is what you guys are describing but 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 when we think about this I, I think and, and this is the thing that gets me and, and, and y'all can help me out with this I think as men and and the way we're, we're talking right now you know this is this big brother bond this is love relationship we are friends a lot of men and y'all can help me with this why are a lot of men afraid to have close relationships like this um I know in my own life or I've heard, I'm going to say it like that. I've, I've heard women get mad at their, their significant, their, their boyfriends, their husbands, because they're really tight with, 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 this, with these guys or this one guy. And they always seem to, when they want to jab at a guy, they jab at him the wrong way. They, say, they basically accuse him of being uh, 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 homosexual, lovers. And they throw it up in the guy's face, and then the guy's like, what? Why do you think that that causes a problem in relationships, having close bonds like that? Because personally, I think we need them. But, but why, why do you think it causes problems in relationships? Well, I, I think most relationships today are very toxic. And, and I say that mm. in kind of the way we look to our significant other to be way too mm-hmm. much. Right. Sometimes mm-hmm. we want our significant other to be our God, and there's just certain things that I, as a man, I can't mm-hmm. do for you. <laughs> you got to touch on God. Right. Then there's other times where you know, especially that female, she wants to know like I'm the most important person in your life. Well, you are, but you need mm-hmm. to tell me everything. No, I don't, because there's no, certain don't. things <laughs> you you ain't gonna be able to handle just because you're a woman. And I'm not trying to be sexist. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be demeaning mm-hmm. to women. Here's the thing: there are certain things you're gonna tell me as a man that I can't be able to handle because I'm a dude. I'm like. Man, that's woman stuff. I don't know how to do. It. I don't know how to handle that. And and so mm-hmm. when you ha- when you start having that 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 rub, it's it's typically a lack of. I want you to be something that you're not really cut out to be. I don't need to be your best friend that you tell me mm-hmm. everything. Now, should I have a close, intimate relationship with you, and I feel comfortable with you in a romantic sense? Yeah. I'll tell every girl I date, they're like, I want you to be my best friend. And I tell them like this, look, I have a best friend. Let me tell you one thing. I'm not trying to kiss him on the lips like that. So you and I are right. best friends. Now, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I'll, have a, I'll develop a close relationship with you where that you know – you 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 know my heart. You know the things that about me, and and, and you feel comfortable who I am. But to call you my best friend, I don't think we're ever going to get to that point because I don't think we need to be. Because there are just certain things that mm-hmm. I'm going to tell Cedric, and me and Cedric are going to talk through man to man. That mm-hmm. honestly, I don't I don't think she has that. You know, so it, it's it's you know I, I think we have the struggle in relationship because we everybody thinks that oh I want my significant other to tell me everything. I've been on this world long enough to know there are certain things I don't need to know about a woman. I'm just going to be for real. <laughs> Talk to your girlfriend about it. Y'all work it out. Call your mom. Call your sister. Call, 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 call the first lady at church. I don't care. Get it all worked out. <laughs> you know, and, you know, and, it, and, come back and, and we keep it moving. And come back and the abbreviated version, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just need the abbreviated because, I, I mean, I think what you, what you touched on, Jason, is, is, Humongous. That that is huge. That 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 level of nowhere. Cause cause I believe in knowing my place. Uh, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Now I learned my place. Like what you're talking about, Jason. I learned my place when I was a very very young man. When I was a, a, a preteen. When I got to to my adolescent stage in life. By the time I got to high school, I understood the types of friendships that were going to be good for me. Like have. Uh, has either of you had friendships like like I tell people all the time? I grew up in a certain part of Dallas, and I had some friends, and we all played football. 
We played sports together. I wasn't no good at basketball, but I got on the court with him anyway. We all raced up and down the middle of the street in the summertime because, you know, we all wanted to be track stars in our own right. But by the time we got to junior high school and when I would get back to Dallas and, and for the summers and stuff, I noticed those same group of friends, and we're talking about guys that I knew from third, fourth grade, right? They were going one way and I was going another way, right? And then by the time we got to high school, and it's getting close to graduation, I look up these friends, right, because, you know, people in the old neighborhood are talking about them. Here we are, 16 years old, and they on trial for murder, but not Cedric. Cedric's trying to get through high school. I'm about ready to graduate this year. You know, I'm thinking about it. So, so I, I throw that out there to say this. Like, has there, Terry, has there, can you think back on your childhood and, and, and some friendships that, they were your friends, but as you got older, you saw them growing away from you. And how did that affect you? How did that help you in choosing friends as an adult, or how has that helped you? Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've had several of those um, growing up. Um, we just grew apart. Um, interests changed. Um, I began to, to to venture and look at other things that I was interested in and wanting to be and do. And they were, some of those people were just satisfied with being where they were. You know, they weren't trying to, to leave, well, from, leave Berrytown. You know, that's where I grew up. And they wanted to just stay there. And so I left. And, and, and what happened was I, I began to you know, get around people who had similar interests, who had similar goals in life, um, who wanted to, to, to do some things to improve themselves. And, <laughs> And so explain some, I, of these I, 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 in, explain some of these similar interests and in these do more things. Explain that. Like tell you for like like the like the guy that was um that I that mentored me when I was in college. He well, my freshman year, he and I have we're still good friends to this day. I just saw him a few weeks ago. And it was like and so when he, it, it's it's and he what he did was what what it was, we got together, we came from pretty much the similar background. Um and so we were able to relate to each other on that level. That's one thing. And then the other things that we had in common, we had, you know, we did, we both played sports. We both, but we also wanted to uh, see ourselves grow as individuals. And so it wasn't one of those type of things where, and we respected each other. Um, and it wasn't one of those type of things where he could correct me, and and the way he would correct me would piss me off. It was like it would be one of them like, Hey, let's talk. I see you starting to do dot 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 you know. And it was the way he did it. It was just the way he did it with me that, that made Wendell really special to me. And so we still talk like that, even to this day. And I just look at how again, we had, you know, educational goals, we supported each other in those. Um we support each other in just like our our religious growth, our spiritual growth. Um, we support each other in those things. We would go to church together. It was never, you know, it was just it just kind of got to that point to where when you see Wendell, you see Terry. Pretty much gotcha. like it is with you. I got gotcha. you. In a sense, you know, in a sense, you know, it's like okay, you see Cedric. Nine, a lot of times, you might see Terry. You know, and so it's it's just like that type of situation. If that makes yeah. sense. See, see, uh, I mean, it, it, it does. Because, because, like, 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 my childhood friendships, they went into shaping a lot of the things I do now. Because, again, I, I was blessed in a sense that, you know, I was blessed with older brothers who didn't like me for whatever reason because I was a brat mostly, I think. But no, nah, not that they didn't like me. They like hanging around me that much. But I learned the good aspects of people and the bad aspects. And that's the thing about learning mm. at a young age, being exposed to, to different types of people, because I believe that you learn uh, uh, in your adolescence what mm-hmm. types of friends are good for you. You know, I meet people, mm-hmm. I've met people in my life, and I meet people who say, yeah, I really don't have any close friends. And you find out that they've never really had any close friends. And then I meet those people mm-hmm. that everybody is their friend, and then I find out that, earlier in their lives, they didn't have friends to choose from or the people that they chose or friends always betrayed them. And I think that as we mm-hmm. grow older, we, we need to understand uh, 
that balance and friendships and how to choose really good friends. Because, for, you know, mm-hmm. we know we know what friends are not. Friends are not people who put us at risk. Uh, the easiest way, so they put us at risk. They put us at risk emotionally and physically. They put us at risk financially. You know, they put us at risk. And if somebody is putting you at risk, uh, then – you have to double check that. Is this really my friend? And 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 that brings mm-hmm. me to to another point uh, about what why friends and what what's important about friends for me because and you guys have already touched on it, but it, it's beautiful like this. If you have a close friend, sometimes having good friends, I believe that they help you get closer to other people. in other words, they introduce you to their friends, and now you have more friends. Mm-hmm. I'll give you, for instance, in my life. Uh, in, in this life is that Terry, I know you. You're 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 a friend. Uh well I don't even use the word friend, I use the word brothers. So Terry's a brother mm-hmm. of mine, then Jason's a brother of mine. And you guys live a thousand miles apart, right? But through me, you mm-hmm. guys are friends, am I correct? And if I were to right. drop off the picture, you guys already have a relationship and you could keep this up, right? Uh uh Jason, okay. you and I, we're friends. Uh we have another buddy in Dallas. I'll just Chris. Right through my relationship with you and my relationship with him, now you have another friend. So through me alone, you have two friends, right? And, and, and Terry, uh, DeAndre's here in Louisville. DeAndre and I, we got to be pretty good friends, very good friends, right? As a matter of fact, he even mm-hmm. when I met his mom for the first time, he's like, "Mama, I know you ain't met your other son, but blah blah," you know. And so you and DeAndre, now you know each other. Now you're friends. Right. So I, I think that having good friendships. <clears throat> and, and and keep in mind, I'm only talking about positive friendships here. Because when you become an adult, y'all know like I know. There's some things we did as kids we just don't do anymore, right? Or we try mm-hmm. our best to stay away from it. And so we now, all of a sudden, there are positive friendships. So I imagine if I wasn't in the picture, Jason, Terry, you guys are there. Jason, you would introduce Chris to Terry. Terry, you would introduce DeAndre to Jason. Now there's four mm-hmm. other bonds that are created right there. Right, and 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 I think that we don't think enough about that. I think a lot of times we become selfish. Now, when do friendships, when do having good friendships, when is it not healthy? When do those friendships become toxic? And 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 I think that's one of the things, one of those warning signs. What friendships are not? I think that's one of those warning signs that it's time to let go. I'd be honest with you guys. Uh, I think that uh, a lot of times we are on the right track. We got good friends. We're doing what we're supposed to do. Our friends are. And then we meet that one person, whether it be uh, us as men, whether it be a significant other, like a girlfriend, a wife, whatever. And that person comes in and says, no, I don't want nothing to do with these friends. Or I don't like Jason. You don't even know Jason. I don't like Terry. You don't even know Jason. You don't even know Terry, right? And, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. now I'm trying to satisfy the woman of my life and still maintain these close relationships with my two boys, and it's like oil and water. Now, the good thing about that is I don't have to mix those things together. Um, that's the good thing about it. But the other thing about that is I think that, like Jason said, there's some things I need to share with my wife and some things I don't, or my woman. Uh, I'll say wife because I, you know, I ain't going to be cohabitating, so uh, I don't have to talk about it. But can you guys think of an experience that you've had where that just didn't work? Or have you talked to students, Terry? I know you work with students a lot. Jason, I know you work with, with students as well. Like some advice for kids or younger people who are not so experienced in the realm of friendships, how they can develop that and, and, and not take on those toxic relationships? I'll tell you, working with students is one of the hardest, especially young men, it's one of the hardest mm-hmm. things um, because I'll tell them about my friendship with you and, and the things we talk about. And they're like, you talk to a dude uh-huh. like that? And I'm like, yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I tell them, and I encourage them, I'm like, man, you need somebody like that in your life. You need somebody that you can talk mm-hmm. to because, mm-hmm. you know, and I bring it back to where they are. Right now, you're dealing with all this stuff, and you got to deal with it yourself. And you get all bent up, and, and it makes you angry and frustrated, and you go out there and start acting up. Well, you need to, um, you know, find somebody that you can actually share that with, you know. So, I, you know, I, I think when I have an opportunity to talk to the kids, I tell them about 
what that friendship is. And my biggest thing I tell them is like, like I said, you got to have a friend that's going to bring out the best in you. If that, if you always mm-hmm. with that friend and y'all always end up doing something criminal or something bad, then you may think about the friend. Or if you are that friend leading somebody to do something criminal about something bad, you need to think about yourself. And you know, and mm. and, and and be careful about you know the people you surround yourself with. So yeah, I, that, that's usually the advice I give them. Like like I said before, it's someone who's going to have your best interests in heart, not the things that make you happy, but your best interests at heart, and is going to help you become a better version of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's mm-hmm. and, I, and can I say something? That, and when I tell you, when I, Jason, I want to piggyback on something that you're saying. One thing I always tell, what I tell people when you when especially young people. The relationship is, is it's it's reciprocal, um, and and that's and that's one of the things that I've really because I think what happens a lot of times, sometimes men get in those get into those male male relationships where it's one is always given and there's no it's no it's not reciprocated, you know what I'm saying? One is always you know being consistent and the other's not, and so one of the things that I really really help with um with young people is hey. When you're with people that you care about or friendships, the relationship needs to be reciprocal. It needs to be mm. reciprocal. And I think that's something yeah. that, that that we need to really begin, we get we all need to get better at as men, period, is being consistent and being reci- reciprocating the relationship in the relationship. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's funny because that brings up what I would like to call the dark side of our friendships. You know what? Because when, when, man, when you're close friends, and sometimes, like, 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 I give you a friend, Jason and I have gone years without speaking at all, right? Years, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, I dial his number, he dials my number. Whatever happens, we bam, we come back contact each other, or we see each other. It's as if we've never been apart. Like our friendship mm-hmm. is like. A, it's like it's just on hold. I mean, we're going to be here. It's not like a phone call you disconnect. No, it's that phone call you say, please hold, and you hear the wait music. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. it's like. With, 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 I know for a fact with Jason. How do I know? Because we've experienced it a couple of times in our lives. And it is like I just been put on hold. It's cool. Once I come back to the phone, he comes back and take the phone off hold. Tad out. There's no more hold music. We're back to the conversation the way we left off. And I think that's a really good quality in a friendship. But that hold period is what I would call a um, a um, that area, the part of the friendship that makes you miserable. Because what happens is, and I, I I feel this part. What happens is, let's say I wanted to talk to Jason, I called him and he didn't answer, and it's been several months. I didn't take into account what he's doing. Uh, you know, he he probably didn't even get the call. Maybe he lost his cell phone. I don't take any of that into account. A lot of times, I feel betrayed. No. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the things that that in your friendships that can make you feel miserable about the friendship? Some of those those what I like to call landmines. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't want to talk about. Like, they can accuse each other of things, but they don't really want to talk mm-hmm. about what makes them miserable about a friendship. What about their friendship is really upsetting them? Like, women do a really good job at this. I'm going to tell you, fellas, we are really lacking. Women do a good job at expressing themselves in this nature, but as men. Because of society, we don't good, do a good job of expressing this. Like, what are some of the things? How, what What can you help a young man out with this part? You know, uh, knowing mm-hmm. that I'm going to be close to this person. This guy, this guy is one of my best friends, but he's causing me stress. He's causing me problems. Mm-hmm. What advice could you give somebody on this? Huh? I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't done a very good job of it. Um, which is which is um, just being straight up and honest with them, per se. You know, you know, uh, with with the person that we say that's our friend. You know, and I guess uh-huh. that's that's one of the things that I would I would encourage people and encourage my own self to say, hey, look, you know something, you just need to be straight up, honest, and if they're gonna be your friend, they're gonna you're gonna make it through it. You know, like I said, but you know, and I and I'm not trying to use this as a crutch. I've you know I've done that before and lost friends, you know. But I've I've had I have to work on, um, being straight up and and really saying, okay, look, dude, 
this is this is what's really bugging me, and what's really bugging me is this, you know, and be and trust that the friendship is going to make it through that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess that, and also, that's that's the. I'm sorry, go ahead, Jason. No, I was just gonna just kind of keep saying that. And I think that is a true friendship is gonna make you grow. And I will tell mm-hmm. you what you, Cedric. There were things when mm-hmm. we first met, you know, that would just piss me off about you. But after a while of getting to know you, I had like I had to grow. And it's like I know Cedric Hart. I know Cedric as a man. Did it stop pissing me off? No. But the reality of it is, it it, it forced mm-hmm. me to kind of come to grips with my own thing. And I'll tell you, uh-huh. that's that's where you hit me the most. When you start making me mad and getting me frustrated, when I stop looking, when I stop making you the villain, oh, Cedric's just being a jerk. And I start saying, why are you getting so frustrated? Yeah, because what he's saying is kind of true. Yeah, bro, he's hitting you in that spot. It, it, it Not only did it help me see you in a better light, but it actually brought our friendship closer, right? So mm-hmm. I always tell people, and I, I just think this is the approach we got to take when we're dealing with our negative feelings. First, uh-huh. look at your own junk in the feelings. Yes, that person took mm-hmm. that action, but look at your reaction to it. You know, um, is this something that, uh, you know, not never to discount a person's feelings, but are you maybe, right. your is your response maybe a little bit more excessive than normal? And if it is, maybe there's something in you that you're mm-hmm. sensitive to. Now, once you discover that, then you have a conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, bro, I, I mean, I love the fact you're trying to be straight with me, but I'm not going to lie, I'm a little sensitive mm-hmm. toward that mark. So as we work mm-hmm. through it, can you, mm-hmm. you know, can you maybe tone it down a little bit? And a good friend would be like, oh, yeah, bro, I got you covered. Don't worry about it. You know? Um, hey, Jason, but, Jason, yeah. can, can, Jason, can I stop you right there? Jason, can I say yeah. something? Because cause you hit the nail right on the head. And, again, I, Cedric and I, I – this ain't bang up on Cedric moment right here, right? It, it's, it's, it's Cedric, I have no problem with, with when he corrects. But when he says something, it's just how he says it. And when he says it, it's like, oh, he could have been a little bit – could have been a little bit more a little bit more sensitive to my needs at that moment. You know what I'm saying? And so I hear what you're saying there. <laughs> I really do, because I mean, it's like I mean, again, I have no problem with like with the what the content. It was how the mail was delivered. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with reading the letter. It's right. just how the letter was right. delivered. So you I have a saying. Funny right? about it. Oh, go ahead. I, I, I have, have a saying. Friend, instead, instead, friends, instead, instead, I, yeah. So as friends, I think that we have to be sensitive to that. And we should be, you know, we should be knowledgeable about that each other, with each other, don't you think? I, so here's my saying. I consider, you know, I say this all the time. Don't get mad at the zebra for having stripes. <laughs> you right? Okay. So when you get to know somebody and you know who they are and what they are about, uh, you know, mm-hmm. then you just understand that's how they operate. And and but but I mm-hmm. but I tell you, this is something I think we have to do better as just not in friendship, but just in human relationships yeah. in, in general, <laughs> is that uh-huh. yeah, I'm gonna have a response and reaction to you, but before I so get mm-hmm. so caught up in my feelings and emotion, let me understand who you are and where you're coming from. Because mm-hmm. If you are one of those straight and direct people and the way you talk is out of love and, and compassion, but you your delivery may not may may stir up feelings in me, well I have a choice. I can get caught up in those feelings because of delivery or I can look at the fact that, man, I got a man that's speaking to, just speaking into my life. Now, to to a certain degree you kinda of find that delicate balance and that and that ebb and flow. And, 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 you know, and that's what a good friendship mm-hmm. would do, you know. A good friend mm-hmm. would be like, I'm going to give my friend grace even though he hurt my feelings. But the other friend is going to be mm-hmm. like, you know what, although you're going to give me that grace, I'm going to make sure that I'm not abusing that, right? Yeah, bro, you know what, I probably mm-hmm. could have been a little softer when I said that. My bad, you know. <laughs> you know, but for yeah. me, right. I'm always expecting him to be soft <laughs> in his delivery because knowing that he's saying it out of love. He's one of the few people who's going to tell me like it is and not spare my feelings because it's sometimes in that direct approach, you know, that Mm -hmm. I get the most learning and talents. But it's just like anything we always talk Mm -hmm. about. Any any gift that's overused becomes a detriment. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just finding Mm -hmm. that balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's great about friendships. They allow you to find that balance, you know. Hey, Jason, you're being a little bit too crazy. I need you to to pull it back. Oh, okay, thank you, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) Could, could, you know, but, it, but but that's that's the beautiful thing about friendships is it's that ebb and flow, it's that right. give and take, and going back to what I always said, it's gonna make you a, the best version of you, right? And it ain't gonna try to call you to be somebody else or be something different. It's just gonna take the mm-hmm. things that you're great at that sometimes you you may overuse, 
and get you in a good mm-hmm. spot where you use them correctly, the things that you're not so good at, it's going to be an environment that helps you develop those things because they're good at them and they're they're modeling and demonstrating it. And I'm just telling you, I mean, a good friendship should do that. And and I'm lucky to have that in my life because I do have a friend that, you know, our brother, I'm going to call him like you said, said a brother that's, that, that mm-hmm. is, I, mm-hmm. I will tell you, there has been many times I got off the phone and I just want to throttle that. I'm like, that little son of a... But then you know, when I take a step back, and all the time I'm like, you know what? The, it's been some of the greatest growth that's come through this friendship. And I think that, that's, that's another thing about good friendship. You should always be growing. You know, as an individual, you know, you should always be contributing to everybody's growth. Yeah, and, and that's something I truly agree with. I agree with I agree with. But I, I, I mm-hmm. tell you, the thing that's that's great about having friends who can be honest with you. You guys are talking about striking a balance and and mm-hmm. getting to know the person. You know, I think uh, I think another thing that's important is that, and and in that because, well, I'll go ahead and say I'm a little bit tough to deal with. I can be a very difficult person, right? Uh, everybody knows I can be. Hard nosed. Uh, 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 I grew up a certain way, and 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 Jason, I use your saying all the time. You can't change the stripes. No, don't get mad at us either for having stripes. <laughs> it ain't gonna change, right? And and that's where I got that from, Terry. So you know you've heard me say it. But yeah, I heard it. Yeah, but I heard my it. thing is this. My thing is this, and and what because there are things that 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 you know I don't I don't usually talk about what people do. That upsets me because I believe that when you choose a friend, you have mm-hmm. to accept them where they are. Now, that's not to say that there are some things that my friends do or don't do that don't upset me. That's not to say that. I do get upset. I like to take mm-hmm. it to that friend so that I don't check this out, so that I personally don't poison the well by taking it to other friends. In other words, so that I don't mm-hmm. become that person who is, I hate to say this term, but I, I, it works. I don't want to become two-faced. In other words, I'm not going to treat right. Jason one way when I'm in his face and another way behind his right. back, and vice versa. And so that's why I like it when you tell me I'm jacked up. Like like Terry said, well, this is not a beat-up on Cedric or bad Cedric. Nah, I, I'm not – the, the funny thing is I'm not a, the least bit offended. What I am learning is that I got a lot of work to do to be an even <laughs> we better do. friend, right? But but that's fine. But see, I can't look at you and say, Terry, you've got to change to become a better friend of mine. Or Jason, you've got to no. accept some things so that you can be a better friend of mine. So I got to look in the mirror and say, Cedric, how can you be a better friend? Because I'm trying to figure out also how to accept the two of you right where you are. And But that's the beauty of having friendships, though, because they make us focus on higher things. In other words, if my relationship with the two of you gentlemen is good, we've got some, some rough patches. In the rough patch, just check this out. It teaches me how to deal with life's adversities. In other words, it's going to help me. Check this. If I'm a high school student, it's going to help me when I go to school. It's going to help me deal with my friends at school. It's going to help me deal with my teachers at school. If I'm an adult, when I go to work, I have dealt with adversity mm-hmm. with my closest friends. So when I go to work, I know how to deal with my coworkers. See, it teaches us. It pushes us up. We achieve or we associate ourselves with things that are higher than we normally would. And that's mm-hmm. – see, these are some of the things that friendships are to me. And as I was thinking about this to, to, to today, uh, that's what I thought about when I thought, wow, man, my closest friends. And the thing that we have, the, the three of us, we all have – I'm telling you, if you took me out of the equation, the two of you were just hanging out on the block, you guys will find that you have some similar values. You, you ever think about that? When you choose friends, I, I, I now not all my friends are going to think the same way, and all of the values aren't going to be exact same across the board. But for the most part, we're going to have similar values. The three of us agree that trust is one of the most important things you can have in a friendship, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a group of friends? Let's say you were in high school or whatever, young adult, whatever. You had a group of friends, and you had your friendships splintered into two or three different factions or two or three different groups, and all of a sudden, when everybody went their separate ways in their separate groups, there was no association with those groups anymore at all. Have you have you ever had that happen? Mm-hmm. Either one of you yeah. guys, have you ever had that happen? Yeah, I have. I have. 
See, and, and, and what do you think the, the what do you think the the main cause of that was? Wow. Well, what was your lesson that you wow. learned out of that? You know, I, oh, the lesson I learned from that is that um, yeah. is that some people are in for are in your life for a season, some people are in your life for a reason, and some are into in for your into your life for the long haul. You know, and I, I and honestly, and and, that's, and I'm learning that that's okay. I'm starting to learn that that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's but, okay. But, right, but I want you to do me a favor. A what? reason, a season, and a long haul. I want you to kind of break that down for simple people who might not be into that cliche, who might not even understand what it means. This simple, okay. simple reason. Well, for raising, a reason, season. okay, they they may be in your life just to help you get through that particular whatever, that particular issue that you're dealing with, right, that moment. Then you got those who are maybe in there for a season, who may be in your life for maybe six months, year, two years. But then you got those people who are long haul. You know, who are there for, like, you and Jason, you all have been knowing each other for a long time. And I, like you and I have been knowing each other for a long time. And you guys, I mean, it's it's beyond a season. This is, like, for real. This is the long haul. You know, so um, that's what I, when I say that, that's what I mean. So, so in your example, the first two, well, the first one ain't really a friend then because he's in there just for right. one purpose. The second one, okay, right. it's a friend. The third one, okay, definitely a friend. You know, the, the, the reason I say this, um, the reason I say this, though, I, I, well, what I wanted you to kind of touch on, and I don't know if you thought about it, but a lot of our friendships, lot, the closer we get, we have similar goals. We have a common goal. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Terry, re, re, I remember when you and I first met, one of your things was, man, little brother, I ain't had no brothers. Uh, my close right. friends, you know, the people I thought were my friends. Our goal was, Friendship. Now, my goal was a little bit different than yours. I ain't had no friends. Right. I had Jason, and at the time, I had a uh, 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 David. Right? I knew them. They mm-hmm. were really, really close to me. We had be started becoming mm-hmm. really, really. Uh, Jason and I were really close to me. Uh, but this is 2004. I had been knowing Jason at that time about a little over a year, about two years, close to two years, right? And so I move here. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, the whole world is what it is. It betrays you. Well, you also had the same feeling to a degree. So mm-hmm. I, I think that friends, a lot of times, and we may not even choose our friends right off. They, we, 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 right. we interact with somebody, and all of a sudden it grows. But we had a common goal at that point. Jason and I, Jason Correct. when we first met, I was ashamed of the job I had, and yeah. we used to come down to Boogie Beach, and I would have to scale back to a skeleton crew because <laughs> my boss was cheap like that. Remember that? And you would always yep. take care of the garbage stuff for me. Because I ain't have enough manpower, and I'd be like, ah, man, whatever you want to eat, it's yours, right? Remember all that? I oh, forgot about all that. Yeah, I remember taking your trash out and stuff, just hanging out <laughs> at Hurricane Harbor, yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't believe, Boogie Beat. They don't believe I worked at Hurricane Harbor when I was a student. <laughs> that was a job in that, man. That was a tough job. You know, but, hey, we got through. But, but we had a common goal. And, and I think a lot of times, a lot of friendships and a lot of bonds are formed because of because of a goal. Mm-hmm. I know people who started businesses together and they've become really good friends. Now, I also know people who started businesses together, they become enemies. But, but I think generally uh, when, when you're looking at friends, you know, you're looking at that common goal. If I'm in high school and I'm trying to find the best friends, I'm looking at somebody. If I want to go to college, I'm looking for somebody who wants to go to college, somebody who's definitely smarter than Cedric, right? Why? Because they can help me get to the next level. And maybe – on the social scale, they're not so good. Well, I can help them on a the social scale. You know, in high school, when Chris and I were in high school together, Chris knew all the in the in crowd. He knew all the kids. You know, he's the guy that went to work, got a job, bought this nice rope chain, bought this big old nice eagle medallion. You know, he was always like that. Me, I was a strictly uniform guy. I wore my ROTC uniform to school three days out of the week. Right, because I have a lot of clothes anyway. So, you know, I put my uniform on. Hey, I ain't got to do that, right? Just dry clean this uniform. And when I wasn't wearing a uniform, I was a standard button down, maybe a polo with a pair of relaxed fit jeans. And I didn't wear tennis shoes because I couldn't afford name brand tennis shoes. So I just wore black Oxfords or some brown Oxford shoes. People didn't know. They thought I meant to do that, which I did, but I just couldn't afford the stuff I wanted. But he knew all of the in crowd. He knew everything that was going on. 
he dressed the part, he looked the part, he acted the part. But not me. I was an individual, and I said, hey, this is where I'm going. I had my head on right. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to do all these intellectual things. You know, I'm a so goofy art club Spanish. You know, I was that goofy kid, right? And Chris was none of that. But the one thing he wanted to do was graduate high school. You no, know, who better to hang around than a bookworm? So I, I think that when we're choosing our friendships, we have to do that. And we have to become more knowledgeable about each other. You mm-hmm. know, we have to understand one another. And I, and I, I think that – see, I don't get caught up <clears> – <throat> how do I say it? Uh, and I think the two of you heard me say this. I always tell people, the people that I'm, I'm close to, people who have a really close, intimate relationship – uh, with me is this right here. You ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> you know, like you ain't never, you've never had a friend like me. And 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 the point for me is I'm telling them, look, I whatever you're going through, I can handle, right? Whatever it is, I can handle that. And I'm gonna be a friend to you. In other words, I'm not gonna beat up on you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna betray your trust. I'm not gonna do all these things. I may complain about you to one of the friends. I try not to, but you know I'm not perfect either. And 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 I get I try to give people permission. As a matter of fact, I try mm-hmm. to give them a thumbs up. Be yourself. Be yourself. See, a lot of us we say we have friends, but we can't even be ourselves around our friends. Mm-hmm. I don't want to discourage mm-hmm. anybody who's going through that trauma in life. That is, I mean, y'all know how that is. That is a traumatic experience all in itself. Mm-hmm. And so. Um, when I talk about friends, I'm going to be honest. The reason why I come to you guys the way I do is because I can. <laughs> you ain't going to hold it mm-hmm. against me. Now, I get it. Y'all say I got to respect you, and I do my best. Sometimes I don't really speak always so, you know, so respectful, but that's because I'm trying to get my point across and because I think my point's not being received or maybe you just aren't hearing me. So I feel like sometimes I got to – just drive this point down your throat, right? And I'm wrong for that from time to time. But, you know, you charge it to my head and not my heart, right? Y'all remember that old cliche, right, from church. And and, and I, But I think it's important that we are allowed to express ourselves. I, I, and yeah, and that, that's like the, that. Uh-huh. Oh, I was going to say, that's another element of friendship I don't think we touch base on, the ability to – Know that you did wrong, but know that you got a friend that's gonna be like, ah, man, we'll get it figured out. You know, this is kind of what we do, yeah. right? Um, that that grace, like I said before, I'm gonna be a friend that offers you grace because, like you said, I know your heart, right? And we and we're all mm-hmm. not we're all human, and we all make mistakes. You know, um, I will go back and I will tell you this. I'll tell you some of my closest friendships don't come because I have the same goals as as the other person it really comes because we have similar values because i'll tell you that mm-hmm. that's one thing that i mm-hmm. i resonate toward is do we have matching right. values right because if we have matching right. values everything else is going to figure itself out right you know if we have matching values there's never going to be a situation where hey jason let's go to the strip club and i'm like nah bro or we're just in a car and next thing you know we end up in the strip club because you're like we, that's where we're going Right, we have matching values. You know, Cedric, you come to me. Hey, Jason, let's go out. I don't even need to ask where we're going because I trust where you're gonna take me. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so yeah. for me, I I think those values are important, and and, and you know, and and I, and so I, I think you know goals are great, you know, and, and you know, but I think more importantly is values because you know, especially as men, because we need to have somebody who has similar values. Because to your point, we can we sometimes forget. You know, someone starts talking crazy to me, and you know, my, and I'm like, now I'm swelling up as a man. I'm like, who do they think they are? And I got somebody that has similar values in me to be like, bro, I know where you're coming from, but that's not who you are, man. It's like, but you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, you know. But then every once in a while, I'm gonna be like, I see you, I, we see each other. All right, let's go do this, you know. But you know, mm-hmm. it's so. It, 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 I think values are important because. You know, yeah. especially as men, you know, because we like there's there's just times that we do get in that situation, and we do what men do, and and we're decisive, and we make decisions, and sometimes to have somebody, we don't always think about our values when we're making those decisions. So to have somebody who can be that level head, and and mm-hmm. and be like, all right, let's take a step back. And I think the good thing, because we have similar values, 
if I'm getting sideways with something and you getting sideways with something, that kind of tells me, well, this is something to get sideways about. <laughs> so, you know, so, but yeah, I, I, for me, I, I know personally, I look for like similar values in my, in my friendships. That is, that, and that is so awesome. Cause like, like for me, and Terry, I'll let you go next. For me and friendships is the value system is important. Goals are important, but I think the thing for me, um, probably uh, the thing that really and truly resonates the most is is that we do have similar interests in certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, like like I, I use my, my I went back to my um, my my younger years and talking about Chris is because the way we met, like we didn't really hang around each other, right? like seventh grade, and then uh, as I got to know him, we didn't really have anything in common. Then his value system versus mine. What was important to him in those years, it didn't even resonate with me. Like, I didn't really care, <laughs> you know. But the one thing he and I shared was the fact that we take this, We both spent a lot of time alone. He was an only child, but he had a lot of superficial friends. I wasn't an only child, but I didn't have very many friends, period, superficial or not. And the only quote-unquote friends that I had um, were girls that were in my different classes, right? Because it seems like all the guys, all they ever talked about was this, this, and that. And I really wasn't all that interested in that. And then all the girls, all they talked about was getting ahead in class, it seemed like. Yeah, they talked about boys, too, but I went in on those convos. I left. But when they talked about getting ahead in class, so I was with that crowd. So I was talking about getting ahead in class. But when it comes to somebody like Chris, somebody I had, for me, we just didn't have a lot in common. But we had a love for music. We had a true love for music, and we both enjoyed walking. We loved that Texas heat. So he and I could walk and talk about music, and that's all we talked about. We would walk and talk about music for six or seven hours. Uh, you know how far you can walk in that amount of time? And, and, and we just grew closer as as young men. And, and then I found out, well, you know, I had an interest in girls. He had an interest in girls, right? But he was – I won't put his business out. He wasn't as as forward in talking to young ladies as I was, right? But we always joked about, hey, man, I want to go to, like we talked about going to the prom. I want to go with so-and-so. I want to go with so-and-so. Okay, cool. Well, I would love to go out with her on a Friday after the football game because we used to get together on Fridays after the football games. You know, stuff like that. And so now we got a few more interests. And, you know, we did things that boys did. We liked playing sports. We started playing basketball after school. And, we, you know, we started doing all those things. So that that facilitated us into growing. And here we are. Uh, see, I'm 50. So we're 37 years down the road. And we are mm-hmm. still we're still friends to this day. Um, mm-hmm. um, um, and so... So 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 what what about you, Terry? What's important to you? Wow. Again, I, I think I, I said it earlier. Um, uh, tr- you know, the the trust element. That's so important to me. Um, uh-huh. and, and being able to really, I'm starting to really get into this now, where I'm able to really just kind of, like I said, be myself and really just breathe. You know, and okay. it took me a while to get here, you know. It took me a while to get here, but Got I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here, but it, it took, it was, it was a lot of trust because I had a lot of, you know, a lot of trust issues. Still got a lot, still got trust issues. Still working through that. I'm a work in progress, so y'all tolerate, you know, put up with me. <laughs> yeah, because cause I tell you this, and, and and we're, and I know we're 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 at the end of our show right now. I I, I want to say this about about friendships, you know, because friends friends are important uh, to me. Uh, and y'all know I always got a Bible verse, but I got one. Uh, I'm gonna kind of try to recite uh, off the top of my head. Uh, that, that's John fifteen twelve through fifteen, and it just simply says that that um, uh, my command is this: love each other as I have loved you. And then it says. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends 
Here it is, here it is, the, the CC. If you do what I command, and it says this, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned, uh, for everything I learned from my father, uh, I have made known to you. In other words, you know, and that's coming from a biblical standpoint, but I want to emphasize the point about friends. You see, everybody that I call friends, when push comes to shove, just like when I signed my name on the dotted line for U.S. military, for the U.S. Army, I signed my name on the dotted line for my friends. And sometimes dying is not dying a physical death. It's dying to self, that selfishness that keeps us apart, that selfishness that, that drives a wedge between us. So when I call you friends, I'm telling you the truth. I mean this with all that is me. And I, I need people to understand this part is that when you meet a friend that's good enough to you, that's close enough to you, where you are willing to die to self, in other words, not be so selfish, not be the first one on the list all the time, do something because it helps somebody else. I'm telling you, you, are, you have truly become a friend to someone else. See, a lot of times we think, well, you're not good enough to be my friend. My question to myself, this is what I ask myself all the time, are you good enough? to be called friend to this person. And there are some people that I'm just not going to be good enough for them to call me friend, okay? I'm not going to be out here robbing, stealing, looting, and polluting for just for entertainment. That's not what I do. So I will not be good enough to be called their friend. But I tell you what, I can still be a voice of reason to them. So when you find somebody who meets all your requirements, you know, and, and I'm telling you, go in with sound requirements. Like, like as Jason said, as Terry said, you know, be trustworthy, but also – uh, uh, have some values about yourself And uh, and grow And you can help each other grow as friends So with that being said Y'all know what, it, what time what, How we do about this time Man I tell you this You're talking about pursuing Valuable friendships You're talking about pursuing friendships This is a lifelong battle We're going to meet many people in our lives And, and there are going to be people Like Terry said A reason, a season, and a time And, and so we have to be careful, especially in this day and age. And so I want to close out with that and, and I want to encourage you. Find something you love. Embrace it. Chase it. And that is your relentless pursuit. So with that being said, this is Minister Cedric. I'm signing off for this weekend. We'll see you back at, at uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. God bless you. We love you. And uh, you enjoy. Kim, if you would, go ahead and cue our music. Thank you, sis. But everybody have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your weekend. You too, man. in your hand. 